Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Zippo Artist Live Stream Series. I'm your host, Danny Jordan. I am so thrilled to be here with you all today for the first live stream of 2023, which is going to feature a limited drop of a brand new Zippo lighter that we are so excited to share with you all today. Uh, I'm so grateful that Zippo invited me to be the host for the series. I connected with Zippo last holiday season. They were a partner of my Christmas podcast called Christmas Countdown, uh, which I am one of the hosts of. We are the number one Christmas podcast in the world. I am also a television producer. I've worked on shows like Storage Wars, Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, Master Chef, Dealer no deal to name a few. And I am so excited to be here today. We're going to be chatting with an incredible individual. I'm sure many of you know him, Dr. Guy Harvey, incredible artist, marine biologist. There's so much that we're going to get into with Guy today. If you have some questions for Guy, please make sure that you drop them in the comments here today. This is a really unique opportunity for you guys to chat dynamically with one of the most iconic uh, painters of our generation. I'm so grateful to be here chatting with him. And Guy, you're already here. Great to see you, Guy. Um, we are going to be revealing. I'm going to give you guys a little tease right now. We've got the lighter. It is in here. It was shipped to me. This is hot off the presses. I just got it in my mailbox today, and I'm so excited to share it with everyone. But let me tell you all uh, a little bit about Guy Harvey, a world-renowned painter, underwater photographer, diver, marine biologist. This guy uh, did a work that was uh, commissioned and made possible by Ernest Hemingway family. Um, he did uh, Santiago's Finest Hour, which was inspired by the author's book, The Old Man and the Sea. Um, since then, Harvey has expanded beyond pen and ink to develop an artistic style of painting and photography that captivates fish and ocean lovers. And let me tell you, I got a little sneak peek of this lighter and it captures fish and ocean to the T. Uh, Guy Harvey is also a member of the prestigious Society of Animal Artists. He's an author. What has this man not done? That That's what I want to know. And that's what we are going to dig into today. Everyone, please welcome to our first artist live stream of 2023, the man himself, Guy Harvey. How you doing, my friend? Danny, thank you very much for that wonderful, warm introduction. And uh, good afternoon to all our viewers. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, this is so great to be here. I see a lot of uh, states are checking in. Please, if you guys are watching, let us know where in the comments you're watching. It'd be so fun to see if we could maybe check off all 50 states today here yeah. in the U.S. Let's see how many countries we can get represented. I see we've already got Minnesota, Missouri. Uh, we've got someone from Scotland who's watching right now. We've got Turkey in the house. So we are definitely going global with this thing here today, Guy. And, you know, before we do the reveal, or maybe do you want to, should we reveal it to them right now, Guy? I feel like, yeah, let's go. why not? You know, these yeah. people are here to see what we've got. All right, so this is, a, like I shared earlier, I was a producer on the show Storage Wars. So we're going to do a what's inside the box moment. I'm so excited to reveal to you all. This is a great honor to reveal this incredible work by Guy Harvey himself. Here we go. There it is, folks. Awesome. Look at that stunning piece right there. Look at that. My favorite animal, the blue marlin. Yep. The blue marlin. Have you have you encountered one in the wild? Oh, just a few thousand. <laughs> just a few thousand. Oh yeah, that's we, incredible. Uh, over the years I've been doing this, Danny, we pioneered the way to dive with marlins because you can't keep them in captivity for reference or you know for right. anybody's research. So uh, we've spent a lot of time underwater with them. I I can imagine that's got to be an incredibly powerful experience. They are amazing animals. They are super highly evolved, uh, very quick, top predators of the open ocean. Of course, you know, we interact with them through game fishing, catch and release fishing, mm. of course. And we've done years of studies on them, you know, through the Guy Harvey Research Institute. Great. And so what was the inspiration? Why did you want to go with the blue marlin for this? Well, growing up in Jamaica, uh, the blue marlin was always my favorite uh, animal. Uh, my parents fished for them. Uh, and you mentioned the book, Santiago's Finest Hour. My mother gave me Hemingway's story, The Old Man, the Sea, to read when I was 13, 14 years old. And um, I was captured by how somebody could write so eloquently about this mm -hmm. fish, which, in which I was infatuated, really. So my passion for the animal, to learn more about the biology, um, you know, the life history, and, and from an artistic perspective, they are aesthetically beautiful creatures, as are all the other billfish. Um, it was fired up from way back then growing up in Jamaica. Amazing. So you grew up in Jamaica, and now you're in Florida, correct? You're here in the States? 
Oh, actually, I'm in my studio right here in lovely Grand Cayman, which is... Um, oh, you're actually in... You're there right now. I'm so jealous. Yeah. yeah. So it's, wow. it's kind of between Jamaica and Cuba, yeah. Okay. Amazing. Stunning. I've, I've never been to Jamaica, but I've seen pictures and it looks absolutely incredible. So when I'm down there for the first time, I'm going to, I'm going to hit you up and maybe you can uh, introduce me to your blue Marlin friends down there. Um, so what has the experience been like, you know, working with Zippo lighters from, you know, first connection, first interaction to today, what's that process been like from connecting with them to designing this one of a kind lighter? We got to go back about 20 years, Danny. We had a, a license with Zippo from way back when. And I was always, no, though I'm not a smoker, you know, a lighter is a tool. It's not just, you know, a, a smoking um, um, gadget. It's, um, right. <laughs> and of course, um, the, the small format uh, is, of course, limiting. And I think the way Zippo portrayed my art on that format made it durable, completely lifelike, authentic. Um, and it's they've stood the test of time, um, and people really love them and collect them. So it's been a wonderful relationship over these years. We just renewed that license again. So uh, I'm looking forward to some some you know really cool uh, sale, <clears throat> good sales, and um, a lasting relationship. Yeah, I mean honestly, uh, is there anything more iconic in terms of sound than the opening <laughs> of a Zippo lighter? I mean. Just that, that little flick. I can remember, you know, as a kid, like just anyone I saw flick one of these open, just that sound of the metal and then the flint. It's just, I don't know. It's like a symphony of sound to the ears. And I feel like that's one of the, the draws of the Zippo lighter, but also, you know, that it's family owned company for over 90 years, I just think is absolutely uh, incredible. And you have to excuse me. One of my lights just blew out here in my studio today. So I'm going to look very I'm going to look a little mysterious here today for you, uh, Guy Harvey. So, so what, what's your, what's your goal for, for this design? Like, what do you, you know, are you hoping that people gain, you know, awareness? I know you're somebody who cares a lot about marine biology and about marine, marine life. Are you hoping to spread awareness through this partnership as well? Of course, there's, there's a message with every painting, Danny. And, um, in the past we've had a multiplicity of species on uh, the product. So, hmm. um, depending on how well things go. I mean, Zippo may use a dozen or more different designs. Of course, every fisherman, every outdoorsman has their favorite animal or fish that they like to fish with uh, for. And so you're going to get people, you know, making collections and all that. Um, anybody who, who is going to go into the outdoors is going to have a lighter because like I said before, it's a tool. You do yeah. things with it, not just smoking and so on. And um, it's... Uh, I think this this product, because it's of its quality and durability, really has legs to to last a good decade or so. It has something that fish don't, guy. <laughs> legs. Well, there you anyway, go. Anyway, sorry, I'm a dad now, so I'm known to drop dad jokes uh, like no. like you wouldn't believe. Well, I'm um, a granddad now, thanks to my son Alex with uh, with his two beautiful daughters. Um, but yeah, so you know, people depending on what image they they what fish they like. Um, they can always go online and check out all the other work that we do because, mm. as you mentioned in the introduction, I work in many different media. Right. I'm actually working on a, you know, a, a pen and ink piece here right now of a blue marlin. Surprise, surprise. Oh, wow. And um, I've worked on large acrylics. I'm working on a big five, five foot piece there. Got a, That's incredible. A, another old man and sea piece right here that I've just about finished. Whoa. Yep. And, and what material, uh, you know, what are you using for that? Is that oil? What, is that pen and ink? What, what are we looking at there? I, I have used oil. <clears throat> this is acrylic, though. I, I work okay. fast, and so it dries quickly. So I can actually, you know, get on with the work. With oil paints, you might have to set up two or three pieces to work on at once. Mm. So that, that while it's drying, you can work on something else. But um, Amazing. the pen and ink is, is very illustrative. And I've just finished writing a new book about growing up in Jamaica with parents who love to fish. And the entire thing is in black and white. So it wow. has some black and white photos from when I was a kid taken by my parents. And then I've liberally illustrated it with a lot of pen and ink drawings, like the one I just showed you. Amazing. I'm getting some comments here that people aren't able to see the lighter. So I'm going to scoot up yeah. a little bit. And if you guys want to get this lighter, it's going to be available exclusively at Zippo.com at the end of this broadcast today. So if you're seeing this incredibly stunning design and you're thinking, 
I got to have one of these. And I actually saw someone out there, a, a, a viewer named Chris said, dang, I got to get a, a Guy yeah. Harvey Zippo ASAP. It's going to be available on Zippo.com, $49.95, as long as go. supplies last. There are only 250 of these, limited production. So you're going to want to make sure as soon as this ends, go to Zippo.com if you live here in the United States and get yourself this lighter. You will not uh, be disappointed, my friends. Um, so, Guy, I want to get a little bit more into to your backstory. And I think you know, you're going to give us a little demonstration of what you're working on there as well, which I'm so excited about. And everyone is here watching live. What a... What a gift to be able to watch, you know, an artist such as yourself, um, you know, work. So before we get into seeing you do what you do so well, I want to learn a little bit more about it. Can you, can you tell me how did you develop your technique? By growing up uh, on a cattle farm in Jamaica with um, parents who love the outdoors. And my mother in particular was not only a good artist, but she was also a naturalist, a bird watcher. Um, and so I, I'm not, I didn't get lessons from her, but she was interested in my progress, so to speak. So she always encouraged it. And I, my advice to parents who spot, you know, a, a child with this gift or um, attribute is to really encourage it. It's very important to to be positive about, you know, the the early uh, sort of um, ability that starts showing up. I mean, I was really young, um, and people ask me, you know, when did you design that iconic signature for your paintings? And I did it when I was like 12. <laughs> and so it hasn't changed ever since then. Um, but of course, the I taught myself, that was the other thing, I, by looking at nature, by looking at fish, wow. by immersing in the water a lot. Um, then I studied marine sciences at university. Um, I got my PhD in fishery science. So I've really been around fish all my life. And um, mm. the the authenticity generated in the artwork is is the result of all this time spent studying the animals. Incredible. What was it that drew you to the ocean, you know, and, and to marine life? I think the, the, the clear Caribbean waters, the coral reefs, <laughs> uh, as they were then, of course, they've, they've been somewhat degraded uh, in the in the 60 odd years of my life. But um, uh, the, the colors of the fish, the movement, but going back to the ocean game fish, just their splendor, their magnificence, um, their speed, um, you know, people like to associate you know emotion with their their feeding ferocity so to speak or their uh their ability to to catch and kill and do all that stuff but right. they're just built to do that and that's what you got in your hand is a predator prey interaction showing a blue marlin chasing some skipjack tunas and um, wow. it's it's from personal experiences that these paintings are, are done that actually was a very big painting the one you've got there it was like really how how big yeah. was it before you sort of, uh, you know, scaled it down for the design on the lighter? At least five or six feet uh, tall. Really? Yeah. And so because they're big animals, Danny, they, they demand a big canvas. So I like to paint them really big, almost life size. I love that. Yeah. I, I think it's imperative that people go to to your website and check out some of your work. They can also follow you on Instagram at Dr. Guy Harvey. Because a lot of times when we see, you know, just the image of the work, sometimes when you're looking at it on a computer screen, it can sort of skew right. your perspective. And then you've got these amazing images of you standing next to some of your work and just the scale, the size of these canvases uh, that that you are painting is just absolutely, absolutely stunning and, and mind-blowing. Um, well, so, you. yeah, and somebody had asked, they wanted to know, is there a difference in designing art for a lighter uh, rather than for a painting? And and what is that difference? Well, in the old days, uh, I used to do, we started out with the apparel, of course, uh, the shirts, which you know have been going for 36 years. Um, I would do the artwork specifically for the type of garment. Uh, you could reduce some of them, you could expand some of them, but hmm. basically the, the formula was 18 by 15 vertical and everything had to comply. Um, nowadays, with all the, <laughs> the tools available to manipulate the art and even print different kinds of art, it's not so important that you your my finished work matches what the um, the the licensee wants. Right. So it it can be manipulated, um, and of course the art, the art does look better when it's reduced down anyway. So uh, yeah, you can it's see just some big absolutely paintings there. stunning. Yeah, thank you. The way that the art transfers over, you know, obviously technology has evolved so much in, in all aspects of life, but with printing, the vibrancy of, of your work on this lighter is just stunning. Um, so you said this was inspired by a larger piece. Do you have 
that painting? That I, 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 that's an older piece, Dan. I'm, I'm sure it was okay. sold some time ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sold some time ago we'll we'll find that person and, and we'll get them to uh to post it online for everyone uh everyone to see we've got another audience question um how long does it take to create one of your large paintings you know for example the one that that we're seeing represented on the lighter well for, <laughs> facetiously i'm going to say 35 years there's a big one right there so that's a wow um they they're all different every single one is different um different amounts of detail and it's the detail that is time consuming. So in that mm. painting you see there with the big blue marlin chasing a bunch of mahi mahi, the detail in the mahi is the time consuming part because all the faces, all the fins, the serial repetition, uh, which is tedious work. It has to be done. There's no going around it, no shortcuts. Right. So pen and ink um, is also time consuming, especially the stippling technique, which is different from cross hatching. So everyone is different. Everyone's a different size. I do small stuff for a few inches to a big one right there. Wow. Um, so the, those two techniques that you just mentioned, can you explain what those techniques are for people who yeah. you know, aren't so, familiar? So right here, I've, I've got, if you zoom me in again, I got um, a blue mine with some chasing some yellowfin tuna. This piece mm. is called six pack. If I bring it slightly closer to the camera, you can see that the shading is done by lines called cross hatching wow. and um, of course the blue marlin catch these tunas in for real if they eat them they're not going to the supermarket and and buying <laughs> <pieces Right. of tuna. laughs> they, 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 they gotta go and, and catch them you know so right. anyway, it's a lovely technique and i use it a great deal i often do pencil sketches beforehand so here's a big one i'm working on now with uh, a group of marlin and um, I'll sketch it out. So I love pencil work as well. But I think over the years, my favorite medium has been uh, watercolor because it's very spontaneous. Mm. Um, I like to work fast. And I can incorporate a lot of detail with the, the pen and ink work with it. Uh, but like I said earlier, the big pieces are my, are my real favorites because they're kind of life size. We do have another question from someone watching named Mel. And Mel wants to know, what are your top five favorite marine creatures? I like all the billfish species, but the blue marlin or the black marlin definitely take the top. Um, I love doing turtles. They're very popular. Uh, reef scenes with reef fish are also extremely popular. Um, the spotted eagle ray, which was in the back, in the one of the paintings you, you showed earlier, mm. is the most wonderful beautiful flying ray um incredible animals and then you got you know magnificent animals like whale sharks and i do quite a few um marine mammals as well so depending on commissions what people want or what i'm feeling like doing for the day um i have a big repertoire um i have collaborated with other artists too like like wyland we've done several collaborations in the past and um so yeah, so we'll we'll mix it up a bit there. Amazing. Have you ever done a squid? Many. Uh, there are popular prey species for all sorts of fish, uh, so I often use them um, in the predator prey interactions where you're sh you're telling a little bit about the life history of the animal for mm. the viewer. Yeah, that's great. And if people wanted to see your full collection, you know, whether an original or a print, uh, best place for them to go would that be to guyharvey.com for them to see your roster of work? Absolutely. There'll be a limited selection of originals uh, and reproductions, which are um, you can purchase online. Um, we do have a gallery. You, you had a picture up earlier of us at the uh, Lasso Las Gallery in Fort Lauderdale. Um, it's been there for over a year. And we have one here in Grand Cayman. My, my son, Alex, manages. It's been here for 16 years. And people, wow. a lot of visitors come by. They browse the gallery. They buy licensed um, items. And um, we have it all under one roof. And there are a few other places you can get them, like the Sea, <clears throat> the sea World shops in Orlando, Tampa, um, Virginia, and San Antonio, Texas. They carry the lines too. Very cool. So if anyone's out at the Sea World parks or finds themselves in Grand Cayman, got to stop by the uh, the gallery and. And yeah. check out your work. But if you're not traveling there, definitely go to guyharvey.com to check out um, these, these prints if you want to add one to your home or office collection. Um, curious guy, what's the most unusual thing you've seen while diving? Well, every day is different out there, Danny, for sure. <laughs> and that, that, 
that's the excitement of going out either right. fishing or diving or just uh, boating around. Um, there's always something new to see. You're always learning about the ocean. And we have been on so many different field trips, both on research trips, uh, filming trips for our, um, for our content, our ec uh, educational documentaries, or mm. just gathering content for our uh, marine science education initiative that's in Florida right now that my daughter runs, by the way. Um, so you always want to be lucky out there because you never know what you're going to see. So a real good predator-prey interaction is always very cool. We've got bait fish being surrounded by dolphins or fish or some kind of feeding activity is, is always very cool. Oh, yeah. And you can, you can go to places like the Yucatan on a regular basis uh, to interact with animals like whale sharks that show up at the same place every time, um, every year, and you can anticipate they're going to be there and have really wonderful interactions. Um, oh, yeah. We, we dive a lot in other places like the Galapagos, Cocos Island, the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, just around here in the, in, the, in the Cayman Islands, it's fantastic diving. See lots of sharks, lots of rays, lots of fish, because the conservation ethic here is very strong. Wow. I can only imagine. I, I've been, you know, done a couple like snorkeling excursions down in Hawaii. And, yeah. you know, there was a huge pot of dolphins that came around us one time. And it was just yeah. one of the most incredible experiences just to watch the way the the babies, the way they sort of swim with with the mothers, that they almost look like they're attached to each other. And the way yeah. they communicate where they'll all dive at the same time and then they all come back up. It's just incredible. It's well, amazing. that's one of the coolest things you can find is, is spotted dolphins in the Pacific with yellowfin tunas all interacting on a, on a bait school. And you've probably seen mm -hmm. it on the BBC, um, Planet Earth and stuff like that. But it's to see it in the, in the wild for yourself is very dramatic. It's and, and there's no I feel like, you know, I had my GoPro camera with me trying to capture it. <laughs> and I looked at the footage afterwards. I was like, this doesn't even compare to what my eyes capture well, and to hear them communicating with each other underwater is just amazing. Well, the, the fact that you had a, a camera at all, you know, gives you that ability to record it. And um, the GoPros have, have evolved in the time that they've been around so dramatically. The quality of the footage you can get um, is spectacular. And you just have to learn. It's a discipline how to keep them steady and not get too excited mm. about moving around. Um, right. Well, that, that leads me to, you know, another point, which is very important for your viewers, is that for every item of Guy Harvey merchandise, and that includes, you know, the Zippo lighters that you're going to get, um, a portion of the proceeds goes back to our foundation, which goes back mm -hmm. into our marine research uh, um, efforts through Nova Southeastern University. And we, uh, we put money back for, for three decades now into research work. Uh, education and conservation. So you're Incredible. in in buying a, a Zippo lighter. You're becoming one of our part of our team. You know, speaking uh, of make, making all the work that you do, that like in conservation, you know, can you talk to me a little bit about you know your foundation and other organizations that you work with, um, specifically, you know, in in marine wildlife. Right. So I left academia to continue the the art business for I left it for ten years and. During that time, I kind of hankered to get back into it. And through uh, an association with Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, we started the Guy Harvey Research Institute. That was 24 years ago. Wow. And we took um, money from the licensing programs, which I was just telling you about, and put it back into research work, mostly on sharks and uh, sharks and rays initially, until we could get more money to fund more programs. And uh, we've now published over 160 papers put uh, a lot of money into it, into um, scholarships for people. We just had uh, one of our PhD students do his defense yesterday. I was glad to see it was a remarkable presentation. So That's proud great. of him. And um, we, so we do this to, to get more data about better management for a number of different species, primarily sharks, a lot on billfish, some on tunas, some on rays and uh, reef animals. Um, Mahi Mahi, for example, are a big fish that we study nowadays. Um, the, the whale sharks in particular, because mm. shark ecotourism has taken off. It's, a, it's an amazing use of a sustainable use of a, a marine resource. And over all this time, we have built this body of work, uh, which 
regulators and managers use to better manage marine resources? Because wow. with the, the growing number of people on the planet, the, the constant demand for seafood, um, a lot of species are very seriously overexploited. Okay. You know, it, it's wild, you know, when they talk so much about the ocean, you know, and how much covers our planet is the ocean and how much we still haven't seen. Is, do you think that's one of the things that, that draws you to it and what inspires you so much to not only paint, but to explore as a diver and to do all this conservation work? Like, are, are you sort of like one of those people who's committed to helping us discover as much of this sort of unknown element as possible? Very definitely, Danny. We've barely scratched the surface. And you know, the deep ocean is really unknown. Um, mm. the, there's a lot of discussion going on right now about deep ocean mining. And it's, it's like you're going to add this to all the overfishing um, <laughs> uh, effects that we've had and you know, the pollution, the plastic in the ocean, um, all of the, you know, the these, um, indiscriminate fishing that goes on, the waste of marine life. And so that there's lots of things that we need to beef up on. I was at a big conference in Panama just three weeks ago called the Our Ocean Conference, an annual event. Um, 60, 60 countries were represented. 1,500 people went. Lots of big presentations. I gave a keynote on the one afternoon, the second day. And it's just mind-boggling, the, the amount of uh, overexploitation, unregulated fishing, unreported fishing, illegal fishing that happens. Um, right. it, it has to stop. Otherwise, we're going to eat ourselves off the planet. Yeah. And and I'm sure, you know, getting aligned with an organization like yours and others will ensure that people can educate themselves and can help um, you know, to, to fight this this resource. And obviously, you know, the work you're doing with this lighter is is helping to, to spread that awareness of, of the beauty of the ocean. And and I want to make sure, you know, people go check this out at Zippo.com. This is going to be a limited release, 250 units and a really cool piece of information uh, that I'm so excited to share is that you have hand signed every certificate of authenticity. So that really cool signature that you talked about that is featured on the back of this lighter is going to be on every single uh, certificate of authenticity. And there's only 250 in production. Once they're sold, they are gone. So make sure if you are here in the US, go to zippo.com after we wrap up here, get your lighter. Uh, Guy, this yeah, has they're, been they're... an absolute pleasure. Likewise, they're a limited edition. So I encourage people whenever these come out, we do them in prints as well, you know, in various different products. Go for it now because once they're gone, they're gone. Exactly. I mean, there are hundreds of people watching right now. So I, I have a good feeling, friends, that if you want to get one, I would suggest having Zippo.com up on your browser right now. And as soon as we are done, hit submit, get one for yourself, get one for a friend. I'm sure it makes a great birthday gift, Father's Day gift, holiday gift. As we talked about earlier, you know, a Zippo lighter um, is is one of those. It's just iconic, but it's also a necessary uh, tool. And, and the links are in the, the comment section for our live stream here today. So you can get directly to that purchase page, get yourself um, one of these awesome lighters. And we're going to be doing these live streams um, throughout the year. Our next one is coming up on April 19th at the same time, which is 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. For those who are watching here in the states uh, please make sure you follow guy harvey on his social media facebook twitter instagram you can follow him at, at dr guy harvey on instagram um, and if you have any more questions please continue to drop them in the comment section i know this video is going to live on and the team from zippo is going to get back to you with answers um guy this has been an absolute pleasure getting to chat with you and getting to show your work to everyone uh, i feel so grateful that i have one of these and i'm, I'm excited to join the club <laughs> of 250 people who have um, one of these very, very unique limited edition Guy Harvey lighters for Zippo. Thank you so much, Guy, for joining us here today. Thank you, Danny, and thanks to the Zippo team and to uh, all our viewers today. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, do fish responsibly or hunt responsibly and uh, do protect our marine resources and be responsible out there. And good luck and tight lines. Ooh, love that. Good luck and tight lines to everybody. I'm saying that from now on. Thank you to everyone all around the world who tuned in here for the first artist live stream uh, series show of 2023. Again, we'll be back on April 19th with our next guest. So make sure to put it in your calendars. I'll be back for that one. Can't wait to chat with you all then. See ya.